Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to the Q4 and FY 2024 conference call of Precall Limited. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star and zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. At this time, I would like to hand over the conference over to Ms. Parwangi Jain from Valorum Advisors. Thank you and over to you, ma'am. Good evening, everyone, and a warm welcome to you all. My name is Parvangi Jain from Valorum Advisors. We represent the Investor Relations of Precall Limited. On behalf of the company, I would like to thank you all for participating in the company's earnings call for the fourth quarter and financial year 2024. Before we begin, let me mention a short cautionary statement. Some of the statements made in today's call may be forward-looking in nature. Such forward-looking statements are subject to risk and uncertainties, which could cause actual results to differ from those anticipated. Such statements are based on management beliefs as well as assumptions made by and information currently available to the management. Audiences are cautioned not to place any undue reliance on these forward-looking statements in making any investment decisions. The purpose of today's earnings call is purely to educate and bring awareness about the company's fundamental business and financial quarter under review. Let me now introduce you to the management participating with us in today's earnings call and hand it over to them for their opening remarks. We have with us Mr. Vikram Mohan, Managing Director, Mr. P.M. Ganesh, Chief Executive Officer and Executive Director, Mr. Siddharth Manoharan, Director of Strategy, and Mr. Priya Darsi Bastia, Chief Financial Officer. Without any further delay, I request Mr. Vikram Mohan to start with his opening remarks, followed by financial and operational highlights of the company. Thank you and over to you, sir. Thank you, ma'am, for the introduction. A very good evening to all of our esteemed shareholders who are participating in today's call. Welcome to the call for FY24 financial performance and also quarter four FY24 financial performance. I hope all of you had a chance to see the slides that have been uploaded, the data that's been uploaded. Our revenue for, for from operations for this quarter on a consolidated basis has been 5,662.12 million with an EBITDA of 725.84 million, resulting in an EBITDA margin of 12.82%, with a profit after tax of 415.02 million, a uh, profit after tax margin of 7.33%, with an EPS of 3.41 rupees per share. For the year ended 31st March 2024, our financial performance on a consolidated basis, we've had a revenue from operations of 22,081.69 million with an EBITDA of 2,786.42 million, EBITDA margin of 12.62%, PAT of 1,406.12 million, with a PAT margin of 6.37% and an EPS of 11.54 rupees per share. At a consolidated level, our long-term borrowings are nil as of 31st March 2024. And at a consolidated level, our return on capital employed is steadily increasing and has hit a number of 23.18% in FY24 against 20.68% in FY23. At a consolidated level for the quarter that has just gone past Q4 of FY24, our revenues have grown at 11.09%, which has been lower than our expectations, primarily because there has been delay in startup production from four of our customers. Though we have confirmed volumes and LOIs and capacities for the same, 
We have had delay in start of production because of initial vehicle trials and launch issues, which has since got launched and normal production has resumed from April. So this catch up will happen in the coming quarters. Our revenue from operations for the year has grown at around 16%, slightly below our expected levels of about 19% which also we hope to catch up in the coming quarters. This is primarily because of delay in data production for certain control businesses of ours from about four vehicle makers. In quarter four, our EBITDA has grown on a like-to-like -like quarter comparison by 16.44%, which is in line with our expectations. And for the year, our EBITDA has grown by 18.17% over the prior period. As mentioned by me in previous calls, you would notice our EBITDA is steadily increasing in spite of high freight costs and other aberrations that we saw this year, supply chain uh, aberrations because of the volatile geopolitical situation across the world. I am quite hopeful that our CEO and his team will ably be able to keep improving the EBITDA and level off at around 30.5% which is normalized EBITDA over the course of this year. Next, please. This is the quarterly income statement, the highlights of which have been read out in the previous slides. And all the capital market data and everything has been provided in the presentation. I think without further ado, we would like to move straight to the question. Some housekeeping points for the question. I'm sure many of you would have multiple questions, but in the interest of giving everyone here an opportunity to ask their questions, may I request the people in the, to join the question queue, ask a particular question, and if they have further questions, to rejoin the question queue so that everyone has a chance for questions one at a time. Thank you very much for your cooperation in advance. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now begin with the question and answer session. Anyone wishing to ask a question, may please press star in one on your touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handset while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question key assembles. Participants in the conference, if you wish to ask a question, you may please press star and one. The first question is on the line of Bal Chandra Shinde from Kotak Life. Please go ahead. Uh, Sorry to interrupt, uh, Mr. Shinde. We are not able to hear you. So can you speak a bit louder? Yeah. Uh, can, can you hear me now? Yes, sir. Please proceed. Yeah. Uh, sir, uh, regarding uh, our new product development, would like to know the update uh, on the, especially on the e-cockpit, uh, where are we and... Uh, uh, how uh, do we see any advancement on, on that uh, towards the customer uh, on which stage we are? Uh, Mr. Shinde, thank you for the question. I'll probably break this up into three parts and further elaborate on this rather than only talk about e-cockpit, which is a very advanced product. One of the products that was supposed to directly contribute to revenue in the coming two years is the disc brake, which is a very strategic product of our ACFM exhibition. I'm happy to inform you that with six pro uh, customers, we have started uh, production and, you know, ramping up both capacities and increasing LOI, and we are all track to meet our schedules. On, with regard to the e cockpit I will request our uh, director of strategy, uh, Siddharth Manoharan, to talk about it as well as the connected vehicle solutions to other strategic projects. Over to you, Sudan. Thank you. Uh, good evening, uh, Mr. Shinde. Uh, with regard to e-cockpit, currently, as you know, we have developed the prototypes and proof of concepts, and uh, currently it is being showcased to various uh, passenger vehicle as well as commercial vehicle uh, customers. Uh, it is in concept stage and discussion with many of them, and uh, 
Uh, we've also announced a partnership with a Chinese company called uh, TYW for uh, vertically integrating with screens and other uh, components. So at this point in time, uh, we are very positioned to showcase these products uh, with some of our customers and customers have also shown interest to take it to the next stage of discussions. So as the managing director rightly mentioned, this is a very advanced product and adoption will take some time in the market. And coming to the connected vehicle solutions, uh, especially with our partnership with Sebros, uh, we have showcased uh, some of our uh, proof of concepts to both domestic as well as international uh, customers. And uh, some testings are ongoing at this point in time with uh, 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 international two-wheeler OEMs as well, which have seen a very good response. And in this coming year, you will see some uh, uh, updates or information flowing in from our end. Thank you. Sure, sir. I'll come back for further questions. Thank you, Mr. Shinde. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Rishabh Shah from RBSA Investment Managers. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, sir. So would it be possible to share the percentage increase uh, in blended ASP in FI24 over FI23? Since we, showed, we don't share the blended ASP as such. Uh, can you repeat yourself a little slower and louder, please, uh, Mr. Shah? Yeah, sure, sir. So I'm just asking you, is it possible to share the increase, percentage increase in the blended average selling price for all the products of recall in FI24? I think that's a very, very, very difficult question to answer because we sell mechanical clusters which are slowly phasing out, which is an average selling price of 300 rupees. We are selling electromechanical clusters which are slowly ramping up, which is an average selling price of 8,800 and odd rupees. We are selling low-end TFP clusters which are selling at around 1,600 rupees, high-end TFP clusters which are selling at 8,000 rupees. We are selling disc brake systems which are selling at around 1,150 rupees. We are selling chain tensioners which are selling at 75 rupees. We are selling complicated industrial oil pumps which are selling at around 800 dollars. Now I think it's, it's impossible to blend all of these and give a blended selling price because we are not a commodity company and each of our products are so different in terms of functionality, systems and uh, composition. Okay, thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Vipul Kumar Shah from Samangal Investments. Please go ahead. Hi, uh, thanks for the opportunity, sir. So, uh, my question is, uh, can we uh, break our turnover between our two main product verticals, driver information, connected vehicle solutions, and actual control and fluid management systems? How much each uh, vertical is contributing to the turnover? Good evening, Mr. Shah. This year, the turnover would have been about, not would have been, has been about 69% to the uh, DICBS and about 31% to the ACFMS. In the coming year, you will see the ACFMS contribution slightly increased to get to about 35-36% as the adoption of this break and the production volumes of the same go up. Sir, so there is a lot of echo from your side, so would you speak a little slowly uh, as far as I can go down? Sorry for you. It is about uh, 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 Mr. Uh, Mr. Jain. Is, is is there a lot of echo from my side? Do you want me to change my my position? Purvangi. Uh, sir, you're sounding clear. You can proceed. Am I coming clear? Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Shah. This year, it's about 69% of the contribution from our driver information and connected vehicle solutions division. And from the actuators, controllers, and the fluid management systems divisions is about 31%. Going forward, the ACFMS of the latter division will increase to about 35% next year as the adoption and production volumes of the disc brake will increase. Okay, sir. I'll rejoin the team. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is on the line of Miral Saxaria from Living Roots Analytics. Please go ahead. Yes, hi. Are you audible? Uh, Mr. Saxaria, your audio is not sounding clear. Is this better now? Yes, sir. Please proceed. 
Yeah, uh, I had a question for the management. So what initiatives are we taking to increase our market share in the passenger vehicle segment? We are not going to significantly increase our market share, but our aim is to get to about a 10% share of business in the passenger vehicle segment. As I mentioned in many, many calls prior, our focus areas are two-wheelers, commercial vehicles, and off-road vehicles where we want to have the majority market share in India. Passenger vehicles, nevertheless, our aim is to go to about 10%, where today with Tata Motors, we are at 58%, and few other vehicle makers, we have just started making the foray. But my hope and wish is to level off at around 10% because uh, and, and focus on the segments where we already have leadership. What is the current market share in the passenger vehicle segment? It's about 6.8%. Okay. I'll fall back in the queue for more questions. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. This question is on the line of Sahil Rohit Sangui from Monarch Network Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. Um, can you uh, please uh, give me the split of uh, the contribution by, from uh, two wheelers, CV? Um, uh, CV you've already said, and uh, uh, the other segment. I mean, if you can give, give me the revenue split for FY24. Uh, two wheelers is about 62 63 percent, and CV is about 6.8 percent. Commercial vehicle is about 20. 5% and balance coming from auto vehicles. Sorry, balance coming from? Hello? Yes, please. Balance coming from? Sorry, I didn't get the last. Off-road vehicle and industrial segments like your JCB, Hita, Tata, Hitachi, etc. Got it, got it, got it. Thank you, thank you. I'll come back in a few. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Pranay Roop Chatterjee from Berman Capital. Please go ahead. Hi, uh, good evening. Am I audible? Yes, Mr. Chatterjee, please go ahead. Good evening. Thank you. Uh, so, I have only one question. Uh, if I look at the two wheeler industry, uh, and I'm trying to compare uh, before COVID, let's say FI 2019 versus FI 2024, uh, at the industry level, in your sense, out of every 100 scooters and motorcycles combined sold. What do you think the mix uh, was between mechanical, electromechanical, and fully digital TFT clusters in FI 2019 versus in FI 2024? Sir, I, I will not be able to off the bat answer uh, the question because unfortunately my brain is not so encyclopedic. But if you can send the question to our uh, company secretary, I will get our CEO to answer that question. Sure. Thanks a lot. I'll do that. Thanks a lot. I'll be back in the Thank you. The next question is from the line of Harini from Sundaram Alternate. Please go ahead. Uh, good evening, sir. Thank you for the opportunity. Uh, just one thing, when you were mentioning that uh, on the revenue it was because of delay in SOPs, uh, is, it a, is it possible to quantify as to which segment is it majorly from two-wheelers? Uh, are we seeing those ramp up right now, some color on, uh, on that, sir? I don't want to talk about specific customers, but yes, there have been across two-wheelers and commercial vehicles primarily, about four customers in total. And as I mentioned, by April, the, it got normalized, and from this quarter, again, we're, the, the SOPs are getting back to normal. Okay, understood. I'll, I'll come back again. Yeah. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Vipul Kumar Shah from Samangal Investment. Please go ahead. Hi, sir. Thanks for the opportunity again. Uh, so uh, what percentage of our turnover should be coming from the products which we have introduced uh, in the last two years? Any ballpark figure? Uh, our average of NPD, what we call new product uh, revenue, has been hovering between 20 to 25% every year, and we are hoping to keep that momentum going for the next couple of years also, Mr. Shah. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Pratik Patel from Chartered Capital. Please go ahead. 
Hi, sir. Uh, good evening. Uh, my uh, question was related to the provisions which I can see. It's a long-term provision has been rise from 148 to 190, and short-term provision has been rising from 111 to 269. So, can you just highlight the number? Why it's so high? I request our uh, CFO Priyan to answer that question. Priyan, over to you. Uh, good evening. This long-term provision is pertaining to the employee benefit provisions which has increased and the short-term provision is the uh, uh, warranty provision which has increased. Okay. Okay. So thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Neeral Saxaria from Living Rose Analytics. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Thank you for the follow-up. So, uh, what's our CPEX plan for FI25 and what was the capacity utilization in FI24? Pardon me? What was the capacity utilization in FI24 and the CPEX plan for FI25? FI25, the CapEx plan is going to be about between 220, 200 and 220 crores as announced over a three year 600 crore CapEx for. Organic growth, this is not inorganic if any opportunities arise, number one. Number two, our capacity utilization at a current level is hitting almost about 85% and which is why we are now enhancing capacity and undertaking capex at our new plants in Pune, upgrading our facilities in uh, Coimbatore and in uh, Malaysia. Okay, and the capacity, uh, the new capex is for which product vertical? across all product verticals, more leaning towards the DICBS. Uh, so it's also buildings coming up uh, and uh, it's so missionary, a uh, lot of it for PCB manufacturing. Okay, and so if, if I could ask one more question, what is our initial, what, what about the battery management system? Like how are we going ahead with it? That is going a little slow and has not yet reached uh, fruition. Uh, and when the first LOI starts trickling in at that quarter, we will uh, announce that. Okay, but uh, we expect a high margin from this segment, right? No, it was never a high margin. We were looking at normalized margins. That's why the blended EBITDA. And like I mentioned in my earlier call, we are taking three, four new product initiatives. Not everything is going to be successful. One will be hugely successful, two will be moderately successful, and one we could pay. It is with that modicum of risk that we have entered into about three, four different product verticals. Okay, sure. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Deepak from Barclays. Please go ahead. Uh, hello, uh, uh, Sorry to interrupt, Mr. Deepak. We are not able to hear you. Uh, yeah, can you hear me now? Sir, your audio is sounding very soft. Hello, can you hear me now? Much better, sir. Please proceed. Yeah, uh, thank you for giving me the opportunity. So I just wanted to ask you, like, uh, in your last presentation, you have, uh, like, uh, mentioned that you are going through such the revenue in financial year 23,600 uh, crore. So it is intact. And the second question is like, have you added any new clients this financial year or in future you are going to add? We have, added, we have uh, commenced uh, some new business with uh, new clients, especially with uh, Honda Motorcycle and Scooter India, which uh, you know is going to significantly increase our top line in the coming years. Most of it is going into production 18 to 24 months from now. Uh, significant LOI has been won. I don't want to elaborate more uh, because it is, you know, some of it is confidential. <coughs> That's with regard to the um, question on the um, new customers added. In terms of share of business, yes, it's increasing with certain customers because of new platforms that we have added. In terms of 3,600 of the organic side, we are intact about 3,200 crores. On the inorganic side, uh, hopefully over the next quarter, we will be able to have some more clarity as we are analyzing effects under due diligence right now. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Karan Gupta from Varelian Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, everyone. My question is... Sorry, uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Gupta, your audio is not clear. Hi, good evening. Uh, so, maybe uh, this person is in the handset mode and speak. So, there's a lot of echo in when you're talking. Yeah, so... Uh, 
Okay. Uh, using the same input okay. you. Uh, sir, your audio is clear. Okay, now now clear. It's clear. Sir, slightly. Relatively clear. Please go ahead. Yeah. So. Uh, my question is regarding uh, to uh, commercial vehicles and uh, off-road vehicles. So, how you are seeing the traction of uh, mechanical uh, clusters to digital clusters? Because these are the segments where right now, I mean, it has been, you know, uh, the mechanical clusters are uh, using. So, now, how you are seeing the traction that they are shifting to digital or Maybe LED. I request our CEO and executive director to take that question. Yeah, good afternoon. Uh, mm -hmm. Ever since the DL6 regulation came into India, most mm -hmm. of the mechanical clusters already have been changed to electronic clusters. From 2020 onwards, most of the commercial vehicle manufacturers are using only electronic clusters. No, no. And uh, CapEx uh, for 25, you said 20, 20 crores. So that is the part of uh, your... 200, 220 crores for organic CapEx, which is part of our larger 600 crore CapEx plan. Okay, for FI 25. Yes. No. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is on the line of K3 Marvia from Catamaran. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, sir. Um, thank you for the brief. So um, my question is first, just want to clarify that the market share um, in our digital cluster, I mean, in clusters in car is 6.8, or is it the share of revenue for us uh, in four wheelers? And um, secondly, my main question is that um, since we have got significant market share in our focus segments of um, two wheelers as well as series, wanted to understand where is the incremental um, growth that we expect from. A, in passenger vehicle segments, our share of business for clusters by uh, volume is 6.8%, which we expect over the next few years to grow it to 10%, and you know that's, that's what our ambition is. Where is the incremental growth coming from the two-wheeler and uh, the commercial vehicle segment is? increasing our share of business with certain customers by displacing competition or going up the value chain uh, by you know certain clusters from electromechanical to uh, electronic and mechanical to electromechanical thereby increasing our value and, sir, and if i may ask uh, do we have a number for uh, how much contribution is from evs since that would be um, the ones that go to it's very early stages ma'am we are now engaged with uh, multiple EV players almost 18 of them and in fact our entire CCT plant has been dedicated for EV cluster manufacturing which is slowly ramping up Got it. thank you and, uh, and I just like to clarify here for your benefit and the benefit of all the other uh, uh, investors on this call as I mentioned many times before our product is propulsion agnostic. So, you know, the question of whether it is EV or non-EV or even tomorrow fuel cell or hydrogen, our product is propulsion agnostic. So really the question of EV versus non-EV does not come into play because everything else in an EV cluster is the same. In fact, we are in almost all the top EV clusters we are present today, except for fuel level, which is physical and petrol level, here it is the, the, the battery level. So, you know, the question of uh, we, we, are propulsion, we have a propulsion agnostic product. I just like to reiterate that. And, Thank you. The next question is from the line of Harini from Sundara Maltinet. Please go ahead. Thanks for the opportunity again, sir. Uh, I just wanted to clarify one. Can you be a little louder, please? Um, is it better now, sir? Yes, please, Harini. Yeah. Uh, so I just wanted to understand that there is a significant increase in the capital work in progress. Is it completely uh, dedicated to the disc brake facility that we are setting up or uh, uh, just a clarity on that? Uh, as I mentioned to you, one plant is under construction. 
another plant is just commencing construction new lines have started uh, getting constructed new machines have started coming in and getting uh, commissioned so these are all capital growth in progress understood understood uh, also if you could throw some light on what is the uh, total capacity that we will be putting up for disc breaks uh, eventually we will have a capacity of about 300 crores per annum currently we have put up a capacity for about 120 crores per annum understood okay thank you sir thank you the next question is on the line of nandan pradhan from nk global financial services please go ahead Uh, hi, am I audible? Uh, Mr. Pradhan, your audio is sounding very low. Is this better? Yes, sir. Please proceed. Yeah. So, uh, I would just follow up on the initial question that was in terms of the new product development. You mentioned that you've got six customers and you, yes. you're ramping up capacity. That was in context to which product exactly? Pardon me, sir. You said that you have ordered some six new customers, and you are ramping up capacities for the same, and you have LOIs coming in. So that was new customers. Four existing customers, the start of production got delayed. Vehicle launches or vehicle ramp up, which has since got corrected, and these are confirmed LOIs. So this delay in production has resulted in loss of uh, sales in Q4, which was anticipated. Okay. No, I mean, uh, uh, there was a question in context of the e-cockpit, and you mentioned that this was in that context. Uh, am I getting it right? So, if you customers we spoke about, the only customer we spoke about, which we have added, is hold our significant volumes in the coming 18 months and onwards, and increase of share of business in certain customers by displacing competition or going up the value chain. Understood. Got it. All right. Thank you. I'll follow back in the queue. Thank you. The next question is in the line of Shika from Time and Tide Advisors. Please go ahead. Good evening, sir. I have just one question. I want to ask. Can you hear a little louder, please? Am I audible? Yes, please, ma'am. Yes, I'd like to understand your expert for the quarter, and I think our target was to take it to twenty percent by FY twenty six. So where are we on that? Ma'am, can you be a little louder and let echo, please? I'm not able to understand anything what you're asking. Hello. Hello, uh, ma'am. Yeah, please proceed. Yes, I was trying to understand where our exports were for the quarter and for the year, and how we see that ramping up. I understand that target for F by 26 is to reach 20%. So I want to understand where we are now and where the growth is coming from. Um, I have mentioned in previous calls that is one area of failure of the company, which you know uh, we've not been able to achieve the vision of achieving 20 percent, uh, and we have to scale it down to only 10 percent from the visibility we see, especially the economic conditions in the U.S. and Europe being much, much, much weaker than India. We are hoping to achieve about 10 percent, and we are currently at around 8 percent. But I candidly mentioned in multiple calls, this is one area where we have. Not delivered on our uh, vision or our promises. Right, and this 10% is for FY26. That's the target. Yes, ma'am. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Smith Shah from Monarch Network Capital Limited. Please go ahead. Hi, am I audible? Yes. Yes, please, Mr. Shah. Yeah. So my question is regarding margins. So I just want to understand that what has significantly changed for our uh, considering we are guiding for 13.5% margins going forward. If we see in FY22 we had clocked uh, around 11.7 margins and 23 around 12. So what has changed for us basically is what I want to know: some savings and other expenses, or what is it about? Uh, actually, it's BAV. Productivity improvements, process improvements, and we see a clear visibility to get to about 13.5 percent and uh, and kind of stabilize there. I have always maintained that we see a visibility of 13.5 percent based on our plans of how we want to do it, and we are on track to achieve that. 
In fact, this year our margins took a slight shift, because as you are aware, we were engaged in certain corporate battles which took up a certain amount of cost, uh, administrative costs which were not planned, otherwise even these margins would have been a little higher for this year. Okay, okay sir. And one more question if I could just ask you, and that is, have we maintained our market share in the two-wheeler cluster side, or are we, is there uh, some stiff competition there that we are noticing? They have actually increased our market share, and we are hoping to further increase our market share with the LOIs that we have received, Mr. Shah. And then I can talk with, uh, you know, thump my, the thump the table and say that, because it's the proof of the pudding is the LOIs that we have received. So can you give us a number of the market share that you have currently in two-wheeler clusters? Uh, Mr. Shah, I'd like to restrict to one question, please. Already you're onto the second now. Sure, the third sure. question, I think there are quite a lot more people on the queue. Sure. Thank you, sir. Thank you. The next question is on the line of Arpit Mangri, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. So I have this question on CSC clusters. So do we have the technology of uh, onboard map navigation? Because like in Vida and I previous IQ, what we have provided is that uh, turn by turn navigating system. We have provided we are the first in the country to provide turn by turn navigation on a two wheeler in the country. Okay. So the map navigation do we have that technology with us? Can we the first company in India to introduce map technology turn by turn navigation much before our competition in the country. Okay. No, I'm not asking about turn by turn. I'm asking about the whole map which we can see in PHP cluster. Can we provide that? Yes, yes, we do have the technology. Okay, okay, thank you. Okay. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Vipul Kumar Shah from Samangal Investments. Please go ahead. Hi, what will be the effect on of our expanded capacity for which we are uh, spending close to 200 crores? Uh, we are, uh, I'm pushing the team for four and a half, but I'm quite confident of achieving four to four point two five. Four to four point five, is that correct? Yes, that's right, based on the product mix. Okay, thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of MN Kumar, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Thank you for the opportunity to. Uh, ask this question. Sir, are we doing anything about a heads-up display in the passenger car uh, area? Uh, it's already under development. In fact, in the last auto expo, even in our stand, we demonstrated our indigenously developed uh, HUV, Mr. Kumar. Thank you. Uh, uh, sir, uh, if I may squeeze in one more, uh, can we put the market share information once you use it to do some two, three years before you use it? Mr. Kumar, because we don't want to give it out because competitors could uh, tend to misuse it. But uh, yeah. okay. I think you would appreciate that. Hey, uh, understood. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Neera Saksaria from Living Roots Analytics. Please go ahead. Hi, sir. Just to follow up on previous participants' questions, so could you give us the market share for two-wheeler segments since it has increased? No, I think this is the third time I've answered this in today's call, Mr. Sektaria. I said I, I said I'd come to the table and say that our market share has increased, and with our LOIs that is coming our way, it is going to only increase further in the next two years. I'm asking you to quantify it. Is it possible to quantify it? Mr. So, Sekhsani, I just mentioned I would prefer not to give numbers out because I don't want it to be misused by competition. Okay, so thank you. Thank you. The next question is on the line of Sahil Rohit Sangvi from Monarch Network Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, sir. Thank you for the opportunity again. I just want some more details on the break side, sir. I mean, uh, which are these customers? Are they domestic? And uh, what kind of capacity have you set up right now? I mean, are you given the... Uh, we, have added, we have added seven customers. Uh, again, competitive information. Uh, we've set up capacity for about 10 crores per month, and we will be enhancing capacity over the next two years to between 300 and 400 crores per annum. And... and uh, Based on the business expansion. Correct, correct. Sir. No, this is this is good enough, sir. I mean, the kind of uh, penetration you have got in this very competitive industry 
I just want to understand what kind of ramp up are you seeing? I mean, this one one thirty crore kind of revenue, uh, are you targeting to get that in two years uh, uh, with these customers, or can we target? Three years, we hope to about three uh, hundred crores or twenty five crores per month is the hit rate that we are hoping to achieve in the next three years. In the in the next three years, got it, sir. Got it. Yeah. Thank you very much, and all the rest. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is on the line of Kush Nahar from Electrum PMS. Please go ahead. Uh, Mr. Kush, your line is in the talk mode. Please go ahead. Hello, I'm audible. Yes, sir. Please proceed. Yeah, thank you for the opportunity, sir. I just had one question. Uh, what is the reason for the increase in our other expenses in FY24? Increase in the other expenses? Pardon me. Yeah, increasing the other expenses. As mentioned, we were involved in certain corporate actions this year, which added significant administrative and legal costs, which is uh, a one-time thing, which is behind us, and hopefully, no, not hopefully, we will not have such recurring costs because we engage some of the top legal firms in the country. Okay, thank you. Thank you. The next question is on the line of Hetri Marbia from Katambari. Please go ahead. Hi, sir. Um, thank you for giving me the opportunity again to ask a question. Um, so I wanted to understand that um, within our DIS segment, currently how much volume or you know how much revenue would be coming from more advanced digital and TFT clusters, and how much would be from the more traditional instrument uh, Asian clusters. 25% uh, by volume, by value, will be closer to 50%. And, and um, could you help us understand how has it grown in the past one year? Uh, maybe you can write to us, ma'am, like I mentioned, because it's, uh, and, and then we could give you a more elaborate answer if you don't mind, because I don't have it at my fingertips. Sure. I'll do that. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is on the line of Mohamed Shah, for an individual investor. Please go ahead. Hello. Yes, Mr. Shah, go ahead. Yeah. Hi, good evening. Good evening, Mr. Shah. Please sorry. go ahead. Sorry to, uh, uh, sorry if I'm asking this question again, actually, if I because I got uh, joined late today. Are we on track uh, to achieve uh, our to FY26 uh, Expectation of uh, budget, uh, expect, uh, means, uh, target of 3,600 crore revenue organic and 400 crore revenue inorganic. Are you on track with that? We are on track to achieve 3,200 crore organic and 400 crore inorganic, which I just like to stand corrected, which is what I had projected in my earlier call. Where we have failed to achieve is 20% uh, export, which is going to be lower at 10%. Okay, so now we are setting that uh, setting the target at 3,200 crore organic and 400 crore, crore inorganic, right? Yes, this is what has been maintained by me in my last two calls also. That exports is one area instead of 20 percent. We are now only looking at 10 percent. We are tracking, and that's one area where we have scaled back our projection. Okay, okay. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Shah. Thank you. The next question is from the line of MN Kumar, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Sir, this is related to the exports uh, related thing. We were very optimistic about Caterpillar, uh, oil pumps and everything, etc. I think that is going on okay. Maybe the other things did not work. Can you give some color about it, sir? Yeah. Caterpillar is working pretty well and it's scaling up. I will request our CEO also to. Uh, talk about it, but one area, one, one thing you must keep in mind is the um, overall US and uh, Europe the volumes have started really coming down because of the recessionary trends and the geopolitical situation, which is half the reason. The other half of the reason is some of the customers we were hoping to penetrate, but we have not penetrated because their business has not increased and they are quite happy with their existing uh, supply base. Understood. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, that was our last question. I now hand the conference over to the management for your closing comments.
Dear investors, thank you very much for your confidence in the company and for helping the company scale new heights and for your patience. And we do hope to continue rewarding your patients with better and better results in the quarters to come under the able guidance of our CEO, assisted by our Director of Strategy and our Head of Finance and the rest of the team. Thank you very much for participating in today's meeting. And as usual, I will uh, meet you all again virtually for the H1 call. And the Q1 call will be handled by our CEO, CFO, and our Director of Strategy. A very good evening to all of you. Namaste. Thank you, members of the management team. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of Precall Limited, that concludes this conference call. We thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines. Thank you.